Lady Oshun, Lady Oshun, I know you are a spiritual advisor, but I have to ask you a question about this killing in Chicago. As a spiritual advisor, how do we stop this killing, killing, or killing in Chicago? Well, actually, if I knew the answer to that, I would not be a spiritual advisor. I would be um, uh, whatever, the highest pinnacle that you can reach. But what I believe what we have to do is we have to continue doing what we're doing because uh, it's been set in motion. This is karma that we have created. We've misqualified, misused energy. And these young people and youth who are coming in, they are so full of rage and anger that they, um, they have to express it in, in, in a violent way. You know, we keep looking for easy solutions. You can't clean up something that has been going on for ages, for decades. We have allowed this, we have allowed this to happen. You know, uh, our children, as they come into manifestation and, and as they are born into the physical uh, realm, they're not uh, children. These are old souls that are being reborn. And they have their own karma to clean up. They come in here for a minute and then they check out. We have uh, the ability to hold in our consciousness, because we're all consciousness. Everything about us is nothing but consciousness. And some people, their consciousness vibrates at a lower octave. And those are the ones who are caught up in the anger, who are caught up in the lower uh, vibration. But those of us who know better, those of us who are adding to the light, we have to hold fast to our decrees, to our affirmations, to our prayers, what your invocations, whatever it is, your visualizations that you're doing for these uh, uh, children, because all humanity is one. And no matter what it, it appears to be, this has been set into motion. And we have to continue to hold on, to hold fast to that thought that this is going to change because things can change in an instant. You know, uh, the term in quantum physics is uh, critical mass. When things reach the critical mass, then they change. If we can lift, our, uh, lift up the consciousness of the children and the youth from 49% who are vibrating on that lower level of vibration to 51% who uh, recognize who they really are, recognize their oneness with each other, and recognize uh, that they are able to change their uh, circumstances by changing their consciousness. If we can do that, it can be changed in an instant, but right now it has to play itself out. It has to be resurrected. All this energy, all this negativity has to come up and come out in order for it to be transmuted and to be changed. We have allowed, uh, and I don't want to, I don't really want to be a, a conspiracy theorist, but we have allowed certain things to be planted into the consciousness of our uh, children. And I don't mean just uh, black and Hispanic children. I mean, it's, it's a social economic thing. I've always said that. It is the haves and the have-nots. They do, those who are in power and holding on, trying to hold on to that power, are still maintaining the energy and the uh, things that they've been doing for a hundred years. They, they are, they, these children are tired of being lied to, first of all. They go to school, they're not getting an education. You've got kids graduating from high school who can't read, who can't write. You've got, they know that they're not going to get a good job because they haven't been trained to fill certain jobs. Those jobs that are available, we have not been trained or trained our children to fill. There are jobs out there, but they haven't been trained to fill them. So those jobs are vacant and they will be filled by others who have been trained. So what we have to do is continue to hold fast. You know, the traditionalists used to say that uh, just before your breakthrough, you know, things look darkest. But this is that the critical mass, just before you think things are not going to change, that they look hopeless, and that since, you know, they're, they're putting the, the media, first of all, and I am on the media, uh, perpetrates that, uh, you know, a, a lie. I heard the... Uh, uh, a high echelon uh, law enforcement officer say that uh, 
we our murder, murder rate was going down. How can our murder rate be going down? And we're known as the murder capital of the world. This is worse than when it was back in the 20s when Al Capone and uh, the mafia uh, were killing. But things happen in cycles. We have cycles of peace. We have cycles of war. We have cycles of uh, unrest. We have cycles of uh, civil uh, disobedience. Everything goes in cycles. And right now, this cycle of violence that we're in is going to, it's going to end. But we have to be able to hold fast to that thought and our vision for our children. You want to see your children experiencing peace. You want to see your children experiencing happiness. Kids can't even go to school and be happy anymore. They're afraid to go to school because they don't know what's going to happen on their way home. And we have, uh, uh, the responsibility lies not only on us, well, on my generation and the generation after me and the one after me. We did this and we allowed our children to become uh, pawns in this, in, this, in this game that society seemed to want to perpetrate upon them. I noticed that um, jobs that, the job that I used to hold, uh, when I was when I first started working at a particular um, law enforcement agency, those jobs were primarily given to uh, people of color, and now that has completely changed. That's flipped over. There are very few people of color being hired in that job. When th when economics get tight, uh, we are the one last ones to be uh, hired, the first ones to be fired, and the, the pressure is put on children to, it's genocide, that's the best word I can put up with it. It's genocide. Pressure is put on the children, children begin to react, they kill one another, and uh, they click, they're doing, uh, what they used to call it? Um, Negro with, removal. <laughs> <laughs> Urban renewal. Every, Negro, Urban renewal, renewal. Negro but, removal. And uh, population control. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, years ago, they used to send uh, uh, people to war and put them in the front. And then they began that, you know, they, they dropped the draft. So then they began um, bring, importing drugs. And then they, they created this gangs. We didn't create these gangs. It's, you know, it's tribal warfare. And how are you going to fight and kill somebody over a street you don't own? It, uh -uh. So, you know, it, it's something that we have to hold fast to know that this can change. So, if you give up hope, you're not going to make, you're not going to create that critical mass. So this is a, I don't use the term conflict. It's a spiritual, what's the, what's the word? I, I say I don't want to use the word war. Okay. I don't want to use that. I don't want to say we got to use weapons of the spirit and all that kind of good stuff. I, uh, but uh, it has to be a spiritual solution. The spiritual solution is to change the way that we perceive things. You know, um, I don't know when this is going to be aired, but it should be aired after we reach the, um, uh, the galactic alignment which is supposed to be the shift in consciousness. Things before uh, the galactic alignment, we chop wood, toted water. After the galactic re alignment, we chop wood, we tote water, but we do it a different uh, consciousness. We see things differently. If you see things and perceive things differently, you react differently. Insanity is doing the same thing the same way and expecting a different result. So if we begin to see the oneness and the unity, that underlines all life, and we began to treat people with respect, have respect for men, women, children, family life, have respect for our community, respect for our life in general, respect for our planet. If we begin to love and respect what is, it'll do what it do. 